From Arcadia, California, The Carter Report presents The Living Word Around the World. Welcome today to The Carter Report. We've got a great show for you. Today I'm going to talk about how to study and understand the Bible. I'm going to tell you the amazing story of the Bible that ended up in the toilet and how a person was saved by the grace of God. We're so glad that you joined us today. And firstly, to start our program, we have with us a great singer, David Petway. Would you please welcome him today as he comes to sing for us. Welcome, Dave. For God, we know that you can do all things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Lord, we run to you. And no one else will do. Lord, you say.
topic today is how to study and understand the Bible. I could have called it the Bible in the outhouse. How the Bible was put out in an outhouse or a bit of it and a person's soul was saved. That's the sermon today. The amazing story of how a prisoner in a communist prison was saved by finding a bit of scripture in a bucket of human excrement. The Bible is unlike any other book in the world. It has withstood campaigns for its destruction. It is not an ordinary book because it has the power of God. Explain this to me if you can. I preached in Russia. I've been to Russia 42 times. I was there at the height of communism, and when communism fell... Tell this, explain this to me, how you can have a vast audience of communists, atheists, people like Richard Dawkins, KGB, at six o'clock in the evening with their eyes downcast, no belief in God, and after the word of God has been preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, at seven o'clock, you can have 10,000 people in that great auditorium praising God. Explain that to me. I will tell you what it is. It is the power of God. We're going to talk today about how ordinary people like you and me can understand its powerful message. Today we're going to discover secrets of, divine secrets of health and prosperity and wisdom. Example, how to choose the right husband or the right wife. Secrets of successful living. Please take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 And verses 12 and 13, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. I want every person to turn to the text because we're turning to the living word of the living God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 12 and 13. Are you ready to go, folks? Tell me, are you ready to go? For the word of God is living and active. This is not a dead word. This is a living word. It is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The Bible tells me... God tells me that his word is living and powerful and active. And if you and I can get the word of God into our hearts, we are going to get the power of God in our souls. Listen, I'm not going to talk about this much now because I don't have time. I don't believe in the attitude of faith in faith. I believe that we ought to have faith in the truth. I don't believe that we ought to believe the Bible just because we want to believe the Bible. But in more than 50 years of ministry involved with archaeology and astronomy, I've come to the conclusion that the Bible is historically accurate. And astronomy shows the power of the God who made the world and who gave us the scriptures. This is not a case of saying to you, just believe and check your minds in at the door. We're talking today about evidence why you can believe in the word of God. The Bible tells us that the word of God is active and powerful. It is the living word of God. It is living and powerful. It has God's life and nobody can kill it. In Ukraine, Some years ago, I stood in a tremendous theater, packed out with thousands and thousands of people, and I stood on the very spot, and I preached from this Bible, this Bible, the Word of God. And I stood on the very spot where Chairman Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union, had stood 
and made the deliberate announcement. He said, within 20 years, the name of Christ will not be known in the world. He said, we have a great experiment and we are going to get rid of God in the Soviet Union and then we'll get rid of God in the world. But Khrushchev is gone, but God is still there. And the word of God was being preached in the very place where he said, we're going to get rid of the word of God. I want you to know the word of God is powerful. It contains the power that made the universe. There are 200 billion suns in our galaxy and 200 billion plus galaxies in the universe. And the Bible says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. How big is God? You think you got a problem, my friend? You think something is too big for you? I want you to know that the word of God is mighty and powerful if we can only get this word into our souls and into our hearts. I'm going to read you a little story out of our latest magazine that is called Ebenezer. And if you write to me, we'll try to send you a copy if we've still got them. Never alone. He found salvation in a bucket of human excrement. Here's how it happened. A Christian in Vietnam was imprisoned by the communists because he was not ashamed of his faith in Christ. He was beaten, starved, and locked up in a filthy cage. The atheists kept him awake for days on end. A rope fastened to the roof rafters was tied around his neck so that he was forced to stand on his toes. As he would collapse into unconsciousness, the rope would bite into his neck, jerk him awake. All the while, his captives asked him, where is your God? Why didn't he answer his servants' prayers? Give up your foolish ideas, they shouted, and we will let you go. Finally, beaten and broken, with hope almost gone, he was sent to work in the stinking outhouses his job was to carry huge buckets of human excrement in his weakened condition he found it almost impossible to hoist the heavy buckets under his shoulder he staggered beneath the load the foul smelling stuff sloshed over him and in his heart he asked if god loves me why doesn't he help me you think you got a problem friend Then one day he saw floating on top of one of the buckets a small piece of paper. It was a page from his Bible, his Bible. The camp commandant had confiscated his precious little holy book and later used it as toilet paper. Quickly the prisoner scooped it up and hid it beneath his rotting clothing. That evening, late at night, when all was quiet, he read the words, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you, Hebrews 13, 5. God had spoken, how could he doubt again? Within a few weeks, a new camp commandant was appointed and the Christian was released. I want you to know a word of scripture is more powerful and pertinent than every word uh, in an ordinary magazine. It is living, it is powerful. God's word uh, is more powerful than man's word. Often in history, people have tried to get rid of the Bible In the Dark Ages, you can read about this in the encyclopedias. They destroyed the printing presses. They burned the printers. During an awful time in Europe, it was a crime to own a Bible. It was a crime to read a Bible. Millions died because they read the Bible. They were sent to the stake and they were put on the rack. The devil has tried 
for hundreds of years to get rid of the Bible, but he can't do it. I think of the communists and the atheists in Russia and China. I've stood in a building, the same building where I spoke, where Khrushchev had spoken, but I spoke, I went downstairs to the communist dungeons where tens of thousands were tortured for their faith. And the blood uh, oozed its way out between the great, great stones and ran down the streets of Kiev. I've been to places in Siberia, I tell you, in the name of God, where millions have died for their faith, butchered for their faith. But communism is gone, but Christ is still alive in Russia. It is the living word of the living God. Listen, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword like the Romans used. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. You can't get away from it. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hebrews chapter 4. Let me talk for a little bit to you, my friends, in this beautiful church on the great benefits of prayerfully with an open, honest heart studying the scriptures. Listen carefully because this is going to help you. Wherever the word of God goes, it brings prosperity, cleanliness, health, and freedom. It'll do the same for you if you let it. Come over here to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, and onwards, dear hearts and gentle people. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, and how from infancy you've known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Come down to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 1 and onwards. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Look at me. The Bible says that the word of God, the Bible, is God-breathed. It says something similar about the stars. It says he spoke. It was done. He spoke the universe into existence. We are not the results of a cosmic accident. God spoke and a universe appeared. And the Bible tells me that when God gave us the scriptures, he took frail human beings and he breathed the word of God into them. The book that we're holding into our hands is completely unique. It is God breathed. Come over here with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. We are a Bible reading, Bible believing church here. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 and onwards. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. The living and enduring word of God. You can't get rid of the word of God. For all men are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. The Bible tells us that a person 
is born again through the word of God. When we come into this world in the normal way, we come in with our sinful human natures. But the Bible tells me when I come to Christ and when I receive the word of the living God, a tremendous change takes place in my life and I am born again. The old person dies. You say, you don't know what my life is like. I do know that God can change any life. God can change our lives. He can take a drunkard and he can make him sober. He can take a blasphemer and give him a sweet and a holy tongue. Would you come over here to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 down to 4. And those of you who are watching right across this great country, on this great network, I want you to listen to this. Maybe go get your Bible. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 and onwards. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written. It is written. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Listen, in our hearts, there's a hunger. St. Augustine said our souls were made for God and they cannot rest until they rest in him. But when you take Christ into your life and you take the word of God into your life, the Bible tells us we are fed and we are changed. Let me give you some forgotten history. After Christ came the dark ages, the Bible was buried in an unknown language. The world became filled, uh, talking particularly about Europe, superstition, poverty, ignorance, great spiritual darkness. The word of God was chained uh, in the cathedrals. Then came Bible preachers. Martin Luther, who translated the Bible into the tongue of his own people over there in England, Whitcliffe Tyndale, And then in 1611, we had uh, the birth of the King James Version. Like a mighty army, like a mighty wave. It was a mighty wave of spiritual power unleashed by God, filled with the Holy Spirit, soaked in the word of God. Rolled around the world. Listen, the nations that accepted the teachings of the Bible, we call it the Reformation, became the most prosperous and enlightened nations on the face of the earth, and they got liberty. The chains were broken. Those that rejected the gospel and the word of God became places of darkness, poverty, disease, ignorance, superstition, death, and no liberty. Bondage, bondage. We sometimes ask the question, what made America great? Because America has been great. What made America great? And many today are forgetting the secret of America's success. Not her armaments. Not her great banks. But what made America great? The founding fathers and the people who came to this country came driven by the Spirit of God and the preaching of the Word of God. One president spoke of America as a shining city on a hill. America became the greatest nation in the world, not because of atheism and not because 
of communism and not because of Marxism, I tell you, but because of the word of God. And I'm going to continue this in our next program when I'm going to tell you how you can choose the right wife. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter in Colombia. Behind me is the great city of Bogota, the capital of this amazing country. This city is a city of more than eight million souls. It's up more than 8,000 feet in the Andes. And we've come here today with one purpose in mind, to preach the everlasting gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're here because we have a commission from God. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the everlasting gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The people here need the gospel of Christ. And I'm asking you today, come with us, if not in body, but come with us in spirit. This has been a very, very dangerous city, a very dangerous part of the world. But we believe that we are safe when we are in the hands of God. Therefore, I'm beseeching you in the name of Christ and in the names of these eight million plus inhabitants in the city of Bogota to come and help us to preach the word of God. Please support the preaching of the word of God in Colombia. Please write to me, John Carter, Post Office, Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. In Australia, write to me at the address, Terrigal, New South Wales, Australia. Jesus said, work while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. Please write to me today. Thank you and God bless you. See 